what's going on guys welcome to fresh pineapples i'm sarah i'm zach and we're starting the lifestyle early in life this show is not for children if you're under the age of 18 then fuck off that's right ladies and gentlemen we're back with episode nine nine episodes goodness i know it's crazy feels like we just started this like a week or two ago i know feels like we're still on the second episode this is about the time usually when podcasts either live or die like people either realize this isn't what they wanted to do or they keep going like the honeymoon phase if it is over well what are we gonna do probably just quit and give up right I mean, that's the easiest thing to do. Yeah. Let's just do that. See you guys. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Stay fresh. (laughs) Oh, my God. Wait, it's fuck off. Damn it. Why does this do fresh? What are you doing? (laughs) Just kidding, obviously. We're going to keep pumping out content for you guys. Pumping out? Pumping out. (laughs) Pump up the jams. Pump it up. I don't like that phrasing. Well, I'm going to pump you out. You're going to pump me out? You know what I mean. I'm not really sure what you mean. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Guys, we have a really good episode for you today. We're interviewing people from fucking New Zealand. Yes, all the way across the ocean. Which ocean? Either way works, honestly, so it doesn't matter. Fair enough. I'll give you that one. Atlantic. Atlantic. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Sex with My Ex podcast, guys. That's who we're interviewing today. They're from New Zealand. They're an ex couple, and they talk about anything and everything that has to do with sex. Yeah. So we met them on Twitter because right when we started our podcast, I noticed that they were new too. So I reached out to them. It was kind of like, hey. And we chatted, and we kind of ended up being little podcast friends. And the host names are Kitty and Johnson. Think about that for a minute, because I didn't realize it at first. I had to explain it to her. Those are both euphemisms for the female and the male genitalia, respectively. So we've been back and forth in contact with them, and, and they're really great people. And they're really their message is very near and dear to our heart as well. Because it's very sex inspired and they're just kind of breaking down a lot of stigmas and a lot of negative ways of thinking when it comes to sex. Yeah, the main topic obviously for them is sex, but it's so much more. It's about the mind, the body, and soul and how everything plays a part in it. The way they look at things and view them is just so beautiful and we really admire them and the perspective. So that's why we wanted to have them on. And I will say, if you listen to your podcasts on a faster speed than normal, you might want to slow it down because it might be hard to understand their accents at first if it's going that fast. What? That's what happened to me. I understand their accents just fine. Oh. (laughs) Well, maybe it's just me, but it was hard to understand that fast. But before we get into all that, What else we got going on today, Sarah? Well, we only have one thing, and that's last week we asked y'all to send us in questions to answer about the podcast or us or anything, and we got one question. You guys suck. (laughs) One whole question. (laughs) Fuck, we're lame. Yeah, you guys made me feel like a freaking loser over here. We have like thousands of downloads, but somehow we only got one question. I know. Fucking... God damn it. That's okay. This one question is going to be a banger, I bet. Let's hear it. No, and that's the thing. This is the one question. For their name, first off, they put, my name is Jeff. My name is Jeff. (laughs) All right, I like it already. And the question was, how big is Zach's dick? I fucking knew it. I knew it. I knew you guys wanted to know. I fucking knew it. What do you mean, you guys? It's only one person. (laughs) Hey, he speaks for everyone. And also, he's from North Dakota. Well, Mr. Jeff, 
from North Dakota. If you must know, we're pushing about six inches. Six and a half inches on a good day. On a good warm day. On a good warm day. Now, if we're talking soft, oof, that's like a lima bean style. <laughs> I'm just kidding, no. But it is, it's quite a difference. We're talking like two and a half inches, three inches tops whenever it's soft. Definitely a grower, not a shower. Absolutely. Which there's no problem in that at all, except that must suck if we if we go to something and you gotta be like nude in front of everybody. Yeah. It's kind of like, hey guys, like I promise it grows. I promise it grows. I swear this isn't normal. <laughs> no, but so you know it's like about average. Shout out to Mike and Becca. Got the AWC, the average <laughs> white cock. Um. But there is a twist. There's this ever so slight curve to it that just hits a fucking spot that women are not used to and it fucking blows them away. I call it the Z spot. Obviously named after me, Zach. Sarah, can you attest? Yes, I can attest that there is definitely a Z spot. (laughs) Yeah, and I would say it's more than a ever so slightly curved. Yeah, it's it's curved. It's not. I mean, it's not like a fucking question mark, but <laughs> it's curved. I have to like bend to one side. Okay. To sit on it. <laughs> All right. Relax. It's not that serious. <laughs> I love how I acted that out. <laughs> I know, as if they could see it. Let's just do a whole episode over my dick. A whole episode. It'll be a really short episode. (laughs) (laughs) Good one. Uh, So there you go, Jeff. And to anyone else who was wondering, my penis size is officially on the internet. (laughs) (laughs) Aw. Exposing yourself. Yep. That's okay. I have nothing to be ashamed of. I have nothing to hide. Now just wait till next episode when we get into his balls. Oh, God. You don't even want to know. (laughs) All right, let's change the fucking subject. We need to stop talking about my dick. Yeah, it's too much. Thank Um, you for the question, Jeff. I'm sure many, many people out there are very appreciative to know that information. You were the only one brave enough to ask. Exactly. We were all wondering it, but you were the only one who had the guts to fucking ask. Yeah, and... You guys can still ask us questions if you want, or nobody can send any in next episode and we'll be even more embarrassed. (laughs) That's cool too. Yeah. Ask us questions, literally anything you guys want to know. We're, I mean, obviously we're an open book, so just as a kind of like a fun little interactive thing with you guys, you know? Yeah. Anyways, on to the interview. All right. So today, everybody, we have a very, very special treat. We have Kitty and Johnson from the Sex with My Ex podcast. The uh, they are what I would call sex experts, sex experts, if you will. And we're very excited to have them. Say hello, Kitty and Johnson. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, hello, hello. I don't know about this fucking expert thing, but I'm I'm, I'm I'm going to take it. I am taking it and rolling with it. I'm happy about it. I think you guys are much more well-versed in sex than we are. We have have been having it longer. That's true. It didn't start off that great, though. That's what we heard. We heard the first time wasn't that great. (laughs) Yeah. This is off to a great fucking start. Tim. This is off to a great start. Okay, right. so everyone's already wait, bashing yeah. on Johnson. <laughs> Johnson, why don't you introduce yourself and then I'll introduce me and then we can tell them about how we created the podcast and why Kitty's first time wasn't so great. Um, yeah, I'm Johnson and we're really grateful to be here. And Kitty and we, yeah, we're from the Sex with My Ex podcast and uh, we're each other's exes. We actually made our sexual debut or lost our virginity to each other, if you will, 17 Sex odd years ago. And that is why Kitty is the sexually liberated, free, wonderful woman. <laughs> <is now>. Fuck off. <laughs> it's all thanks to Johnson. 
Oh, <laughs> hashtag not thanks for Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> um cool is that you introducing yourself are you done yeah okay cool uh so i'm kitty i co-host our podcast sex with my ex and it has been so fun already in the journey so yep we have known each other for about 17 years and have rekindled our friendship about five years ago and over the last year worked out that we had some things in common like we were really big advocates for mental health um, and also really big advocates for normalizing conversations around sexuality and the healing and connection that can happen through sex. I mean, that wasn't how our first experience was. And if you want to hear about it, go to episode one of our podcast. Cause I mean, it is not like great. <laughs> like it is a really honest and probably most people first time that they have a, a sexual experience is probably like that. So you can go hear about it. Um, but yeah, I'm a holistic wellness practitioner from New Zealand. I'm mum of three. And amongst other things, I'm a yeah, big advocate for diluting shame. So here we are doing that. Thank you for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for being here. And definitely, if you guys haven't yet, uh, listen to their first episode. It is fucking hilarious. Them <laughs> telling how they lost their virginity to each other oh and where they went from there. It's very, very good. Highly recommend. Thank you. We appreciate that. So other than the first episode with the glorious story. Mm -hmm. What is your podcast about overall? And what are you hoping to accomplish with it? Well, as Kitty, as Kitty said, right, there's this, uh, there's this shame piece that needs to be dealt with. Um, a lot of people just find it difficult to talk about sex. And I think first and foremost, we want to create a safe space where we have conversation and we also have guests on as well to talk about just the, the length and breadth of sexuality and by sexuality I don't mean like sexual orientation I mean connecting with our sexual being because it's a it's a part of our being right a very sacred part of who you are so we want to create safe spaces for those conversations to take place and that like Kelly said dilutes a whole bunch of shame uh, and so we're hoping to be a bit of an example in that sense but also are we allowed to swear on your podcast Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. I was going to say, I already did. <laughs> um, I didn't even check. I just assumed. <laughs> but also but also, just to bring in like the fun and the fucking hot, saucy bits as well, the funny, the kind of awkward, because, and I'm using air quotes here, we want everyone to realize we're all quote unquote as fucked up as each other and we all have crazy sex thoughts. And, and like some of us choose to act on them, some of us don't. But we want to help people find the deliciousness in their sexual selves, whatever that means for them. And we'll explore a whole bunch of different topics with that, uh, with that goal in mind. On the side of that, we're setting up a business as well, which is going to be hosting in-person workshops, workshops online, and some coaching as well, which we've started doing. Some of that's around non-monogamy. So like actually getting alongside couples that are entering the lifestyle because we have some stuff from our own experiences that we can share, help them avoid mistakes, make sure that they're having really good experiences. They're avoiding uh, some of the pitfalls and some BDSM, some kink stuff, some tantra stuff, some breathwork stuff, some shame diluting stuff, just all this Kind of carry on so at the moment we're, we're pretty busy like the first the podcast is kind of the first part of that and um yeah we're really enjoying it so far it's been fun the phrase that comes to mind when i think like there's so much and if we kept it the most simple we possibly could i feel as if we are here to be part of a movement of sexual liberation and we have so many stories all of us. I have not come across a person in my line of work that doesn't have some kind of story around not feeling sexually liberated. And that is due to so many things, obviously, you know, social conditioning and generational trauma and all that kind of stuff. But if we, and you guys are part of that too, you know, being part of this movement of sexual liberation for everyone to be able to experience that. And that can be any gender, any sexual orientation, whether you're in or outside of any kind of partnerships, we can reclaim that sexual liberation in ourselves. Um, yeah, so it's just, I feel really honored to even just be in this space. And yeah, shout out to you guys and everyone that is part of this movement, because I think that's really the essence of it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> it is one big movement. Yeah. This is a very wide general question, but what does sex mean to you personally? 
Oh, um, so like Johnson said before, I believe that there are so many parts of who we are as humans. You know, there is the physical part of us, the mental part of us, the emotional, the spiritual and the sexual. And what I feel sex is, is it is its own energy. It's its own frequency. Like it is an entity in itself. And I think about two different things, either sexuality and sex. And we've talked about this really cool concept of the difference between the two. But when I think about sex in terms of say with another, I'll kind of use it like that. It is, um, it's a, an opportunity for an energy exchange and for moments of intimacy and connection and vulnerability. I believe that pleasure is one of the most potent healing modalities that exists. I've experienced it personally in my life and in my line of work, I help to facilitate and connect people to their own sex, their own sexuality, their own pleasure. I believe it's completely sacred and that all of the last like predominantly 1800 years is completely stripped out of how sacred it truly is. I believe it is a way for us to go into a journey of self-discovery, self-actualization and, and learn about ourselves, you know, whether that is through sensations or through vulnerability or whatever it is, it's a learning tool. Like it's a way for us to learn about ourselves, learn about people, learn about, um, yeah, others and be able to be inside of ourselves and also experience what it is for someone else. If someone else is in that interaction, there's like this element of, of yeah getting to be in somebody else's experiences with them as well there you go wow that was beautiful <laughs> and a way better answer than what i would have given johnson's like fuck i know how are you gonna follow that johnson what the fuck well, well do you know what's do you know what's interesting it's like and 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 why we chose to work together is that we're we're aligned on the real core stuff and then but some of the like some of the language that Kitty and I use to express things, even our worldview on like mm. big existential stuff is actually different, right? Which yeah. might surprise some people. Um, different flavors. I, I always joke, and, and I am joking because I say this with all love, but K- Kitty is like on the fucking woo-woo pink and fluffy end of this, <laughs> right? And and I'm a bit more of the not skeptic or cynic, but like. Uh, yeah again language is clumsy around that but what we do agree on is sex being this flow of energy right and it's sacred now how we describe that energy is slightly different but that's fine because at the end of the day you can think about it however you want the example i like to give is uh, bdsm kink or ds right so you've got like dom dom and little sub sub and they like want to play wait can you just do that again no, one time that was a one time deal. <laughs> oh, fuck. And um, you know, they might want to they might want to play with things like impact play, like spanking. That's a pushing and pulling of energy, right? Because it builds there's there's like it, there's, it's in time and space, and there's a tension that's built, like the tension that builds before the spanking happens, and then during as it builds up. I think you guys mentioned it one of your episodes about someone like going in and hitting things too, like fast and hard or whatever you get a very different experience, right? If that tension is slowly built up in an erotic sensual way and you play with that energy, you push it, then you pull it, then you pull it, then you push it. And normal missionary sex, like a three minute quickie, whatever, like is exactly the same. It's this exchange of like energy. You know, there's energy being transferred because you're fucking sweaty afterwards, right? Like Mm -hmm. you're expending energy, you're giving time, you're connecting with a person. So I think there's like, there's energy, different ways of explaining that or describing that. There's pleasure at the center of it because, I mean, there's the obvious procreating thing, right? But outside of that, we have sex outside of just wanting to procreate. So pleasure Most is the of the time, of we actually aren't having sex to make babies. And so the concept yeah. that sex is to make babies is actually like a small percentage of how people are, most people are having sex. It's usually for pleasure or a connection. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Kitty and I talk about sacred. We agree there's sac- uh, sacredness to it we might use slightly different language again, which is fine because it's all part of the conversation. See, I look at it as, as even say masturbating, there's something sacred because yep. I'm, I'm interacting with a really precious, not secret, but private part of me that I can share bits of with other humans, but no one else can fully engage in my sexuality, right? Except for myself. So there's a lot to unpack there and that's why you know i think we'll have a podcast running for the next few fucking years because there's so many different <laughs> yeah. people to get on and talk to about it and there's so many different like 
little aspects to it all. But yeah, connection, pleasure, and energy, I think is how it sums sex up. Yeah, I think that that's a very good way to put it. Like, I think that it's very personalized for everybody. But at the end of the day, like it's about connection, which could be with yourself. Like sex can be with yourself, right? Um, Uh, I'm a big advocate for that, buddy. Yeah, for (laughs) sure, right? You know, and like a connection, like transfer yeah. energy, like, you know, all these things. And I feel like to sum up sex is like so hard because it's such a huge broad mm. topic. But I feel like that's mm. what you guys are like doing in your podcast. Like well, can, every can single I, episode you're going into it, you know. Can I hijack can I hijack your show for like 30 seconds? Because there's a, a question that I'd like to Absolutely. ask you guys ask you guys, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's and it's like a it's a way of highlighting this energy thing because people kind of hear energy and they think like oh you know fucking like amethyst crystals in your water bottle what the fuck like, that's not what it's <laughs> most people don't talk. think that by the way because the energy has got nothing to do with spirituality but that's okay <laughs> the well the point i'm trying to make is it's not necessarily that Tangible. end of the like where we're spectrum mm. like if you think about it in practical terms so you guys have had non-monogamous experiences right mm. where you've interacted with other people if you were to explain the to someone like what kind of energy you might use the word connection or what kind of vibe or whatever fucking word you want to use do you guys have between the two of you when you're like making love when you're in that like i fucking love this human this is my person how would you describe that compared to even the hottest sexual encounter you've had outside of that so have you guys experienced that, like in the swinging world, that difference in energy with like, say, play partners versus when you guys reconnect and have sex afterwards? Yeah, for sure. Yes. I mean, for me, at least I'll just answer first and say, like, I mean, I've only been with one other person since we've been together. And whenever I have sex, I think to myself, I'm like, yeah, like about what they are, like physical attraction and, mm. you know, things of that nature and what I enjoy about them. Like, that's what I'm thinking while I'm having sex with them. But when I'm having sex with Sarah, it's those things, but it's a lot deeper than that. And it's like yeah. a lot more, it's, it's more meaningful. And it's not just mm. like, Oh, I like, I love your ass. It's so juicy. Mm. <laughs> it's more like, it's more like, gosh, she's so fucking beautiful in this moment. And I fucking yeah. love being intimate with her. Yeah. And it's like, there's like no place I'd rather be other than, Aww. Inside, inside her yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and see and see that goes beyond just the physical right like you said yeah, and so and so there's that sanctity or sacredness or in it and so that's the kind of energy kind of getting it right so mm. yeah yeah very cool what the about you Sarah do you find the same yeah I definitely feel a difference because if it's with someone else it's more of a playful mm. or hot thing but whenever it's me and him there's like love mixed in that energy yeah. and like a actual bonding and like feeling each other's souls oh I was just thinking that as you said it that was so wild I was thinking that exact thing oh yeah beautiful <laughs> Johnson and Zach are like these fucking crazy bitches <laughs> I'm, I'm not actually, I was sitting here all smitten going, oh, fuck the oh. kid. Oh, no, 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 so cute. You guys are so cute. Thanks. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> that, that was more than 30 seconds, Johnson, but that was a really good hijacking. Thank you. That was a good hijacking. Yeah. yeah. Was good. Thanks for putting us on the spot. <laughs> of course. So in one of your episodes, you talked about shame and I liked it a lot. So I wanted you to talk about that now. Our society in general, mostly, has been raised to be ashamed of sex mm-hmm. and to only be monogamous. Mm-hmm. So can you tell us your feelings about that and what you would say to someone who is internally struggling with that? You're going to go, Johnson, because you've been in the non-monogamous world for a long time and I can speak more into shame and kind of my experiences. Yeah. Uh, wow. I mean there's a lot there right and I guess that's one of the reasons that we're literally stepping into coaching I guess that's the simplest way of saying it but getting alongside people that are moving into this space or having these thoughts it's a it's a delicate one because you kind of have to go back to why why is someone struggling with it in the first place and there's the societal stuff right and then for a lot of us especially in the western world there's that 
and I, I say for a lot of people, not everybody, but for a lot of people, there's that religious background as well, right? Now, what surprises a lot of people when I tell them that I'm into kink, BDSM, DS, non-monogamy, a whole bunch of stuff, that I'm also absolutely 100% Christian and a believer in Christ. And a lot of people can't reconcile that in their brain. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not going to get theological with you on the on this <laughs> show. That That's a whole nother conversation, which we'll, we'll probably do an episode on at some point because there's a lot in that. But the point I'm making is that for a lot of people, like that's powerful because it's a big part of their worldview. Like they believe that there's this creator and there's these purposes and it forms their worldview. And then a church or, or an organization or the structures that we've put in place, whether it's government, uh, like legislation or like I said, church doctrine or whatever, we're still living the consequences of a a lot of those teachings and beliefs. They have a really powerful impact on our psyche and our spirit, right? So the first thing I'd say is like identify where that's coming from and then test it against your worldview. And if your worldview is to be loving, let me answer it this really simple way, right? I have two rules when it comes to sexuality. Don't break the law and don't harm anybody. Now, I didn't use the words like don't inflict pain or don't hurt anybody because in a really delicious way and in a consensual way, those can be played with as well. But Mm. harm is like the mental, emotional, physical damage that you can cause by like not having consent or stepping outside certain boundaries. So if you're thinking about non-monogamy and there's this, there's a shame or a doubt or an un- or a discomfort within you about that, but you just know that it's part of your sexuality that you want to explore this stuff. I personally think if you can stand there and your moral compass is still pointing north and you know that you can act within consent, you're not going to break any boundaries, you're acting in a loving, compassionate way that doesn't break any laws or harm anybody, then step into it and don't feel like you need to eat the whole elephant at once. Like you can take a baby step and then see how you feel. You can always come back. It's hard to go any further than that without talking about shame. So I'll probably hand it over to, to Kitty there. Uh, well, I'm just going to start this off with take what fits and leave what doesn't um, for anyone that is listening to this. Cause I've got some pretty big views on shame and um, the society that we have been conditioned to predominantly last 1800 years Uh, And honestly, I think there has been an intentional uh, stripping away of our sexuality, stripping away of our relationships to our bodies. You just have to look at the like media once to see how, you know, women's bodies and men's bodies are completely put down, how sexuality is completely put down and how we're trying to be forced to be put inside boxes. Speaking from two people that have both been married as well, we've both been married and come out of marriages is that there's a conditioning around it. We're more tameable if we do what people say. <laughs> like, I'm just going to say it. We are easier to tame if we stay in the boxes, if we society wants us. And the thing is, is that not that long ago, and actually still in so many cultures around the world, non-monogamy is, is, is how the villages function. You know, there are still current day tribal societies that function very, very, very well in an environment where there is no ownership of humans, where it's like, this person is my person, um, or this is my, you know, sexuality or whatever. It's so much more openness and expansiveness in that. And we all raise children together. I'm a solo mum of three children. And the way that our society is conditioned is failing us in so many ways, because it's here, let's have a white picket fence life of a marriage and kids and not having anyone supporting you. And also don't be open in your sexuality because it's especially if you're a woman, then you're seen as a threat <laughs> because women that are comfortable in their sexuality are still to this day misunderstood, which is completely, ugh, it doesn't make any sense at all um, in terms of what's real. It does in terms of trying to keep us tameable, um, but the shame around it. So I'm going to go into what I think people can do. First of all, it's not 
most of us in this modern day society, it's not our truths. It was the truths of the generations before us. The generations before us were very much like, let's not talk about sex. Let's stay in marriages for 50 years, even if we're not happy. We, you, what you guys are doing is breaking that paradigm. What we're doing in these conversations is breaking that paradigm. So coming into what is true to you? Like, what is true to you? Are you vanilla style sex, which is absolutely fine and beautiful. We're all different shades of it. Is that true to you? Or actually, would you like to explore something else? Is it true to you to be in a marriage for the rest of your life? Is it true to you or is it not? You know, is that something that has come from society and the movies that tell us, you know, that we should go and swoon after handsome Prince Charming and here comes Prince Charming again, <laughs> you know, and that's what we should aspire to. So it's breaking down whatever is not actually your truth and being really honest about that because it's your life. This is your life to live. Do you really want to live your whole life and be living under the umbrella of other, other people's shame. Like, fuck that. <laughs> so what I, what I would suggest is um, being in situations where these things can be normalized. Listen to Fresh Pineapples podcast. Listen to the Sex With My Ex podcast. <laughs> be around people that support you and all your authenticity. Look at the people around you. How much are they also living in their authenticity? Like surround yourself in a, with a shame-free environment. Because then you can start looking into fantasy or non-monogamy or any of those things, but having a foundation of exposing yourself to normalizing conversations around different types of relationships, different kinds of sexual orientation exploration. I think that's a great starting point. And then from there, see where it goes. Like listen to our episode about fantasy. That's a really great one for eliminating shame around sexual fantasy and dipping your toes in. Just because you have fantasies doesn't mean you have to follow through with it, but it allows you to start eliminating some of the shame. Yeah. It's been just so much, but <laughs> that felt like I needed to come through. It was like a full transmission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What you said, we believe in that yeah. a lot as well. Yeah. So it's nice to hear someone else say it as well. Yeah. 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 I think it's just all of us getting together, breaking down the taboo, breaking down the stigma. It's not helping us. And I will say as well, you know, when it comes to speaking about things, all of the research says that the more we can speak about the, these things, the more we can normalize it, the more we can avoid situations that we don't want to be in. You know, I've just run a sex positive parenting workshop and so much of it was trying to teach these parents that them speaking about it wasn't going to have, that wasn't going to mean their 13 year olds were going to go and have sex. It was going to mean they had a shame-free environment to be raised in where they could have open communication. Like speaking about it is one of the most valuable things we can do for the ripple effects in our society oh yeah right. completely i agree yeah absolutely okay one thing i one thing i would say if i can real quick real quick mm. is that just like monogamy is not for everybody non-monogamy is the same too like absolutely. monogamy and for sure. the typical relationship or the traditional i should say relationship structure it absolutely is for a lot of people and yeah every relationship structure I would never say one is better than another and it's what's true and what's right for that person and they Absolutely. all take they all take work they all take effort anytime you commit to any other person takes work and dedication and communication whether that's monogamy polyamory swinging poly solo asexuality it doesn't matter mm -hmm. They all have their pros and cons and their own uh, challenges and, and hard work involved. So as I like to say, there's no black belt of fucking sex that people mm -hmm. need to get to by like ticking off boxes going, yes, I'm non-monogamous. Yes, I swing. Yes, I go to parties. No, yes, I'm into to you. Yes, Like, yeah, you find the deliciousness in your own sexuality and then refer to rules one and two and then live in a place mm -hmm. of love and liberation mm -hmm. in that and, um, yeah, it's just fucking yummy. And right. also that that might change. I think that's a really important thing. Like for me in my time in traditional monogamous relationships was so beautiful. I've just experienced so many amazing growth and exploration within closed relationships. And then also outside of that. And that will just change as you do. Being open to that, I think, is really important. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's very personalized, I think, for everyone. Everybody's different and every relationship is different. And that's something that we are aiming for in our podcast is to kind of like open up the world for mm -hmm. a lot of people and not, it's like our podcast isn't about us convincing people to swing yeah. or not. You know what I mean? It's more about exposure. Yeah. It's about exposure and it's about love and 
how a lot of people feel love differently and there's nothing wrong with that you know and yeah yeah so what are y'all's experience with non-monogamy just kind of give us some background in in your lives Johnson, take us away. <laughs> I've only got a year to deal with. You've got a lot more than that. In, in various shapes and forms, I've, I've been non-monogamous on and off since my late teens. And what I mean by that is it's been times where I've been solo and then I've played with couples who are in a, a relationship. And a lot of people don't think of that as non-monogamy. Like I'm the single person, they're the couple, but that's part of that non-monogamous sexual energy flow right absolutely um so that's kind of how it started out for for me in my late teens and then i was in a couple of relationships that they weren't super super long but there was non-monogamous components to that as well so whether that's like threesomes or playing with other couples and then when i got married that actually like slowed down a lot a lot like she wasn't super non-monogamous to be fair and so the experiences were pretty few and far between but then add into that like building a career and having kids so just this it was this kind of break if you like and then towards the end of our marriage engaged in that again and then since then have been reasonably active in the in the swinging scene in this part of the world and now actually so myself and my current partner who we on the podcast we call mrs johnson myself and mrs johnson um, she's amazing Mm. so uh, we we were swinging so that was with couples with other singles at parties that sort of thing and then for a variety of reasons she chose to take some time out from non-monogamy herself because she wanted to do a sort of reset on her sexual connection with herself right and the conversation was had, and it was totally her idea, was, well, you're still free to go do your thing. So if you want to play with other singles or couple, or you want to go to parties, you might fill your boots. It's just, it's not for me right now. So that was a new dynamic for me because I'd never been in a relationship and then gone and played solo. So that's something that's new to me this calendar year, really. So... I don't know. I guess I, I guess I've experienced most of the little pockets. The one thing I'm not familiar with, I mean, I'm familiar with, but I, I, it doesn't resonate with me and I don't act it out as polyamory per se. So I'd call myself romantically monogamous and sexually non-monogamous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I noticed, feel free to not answer this or, you know, don't get into any detail that you don't want to get into, but you said that you were non-monogamous towards the end of your marriage was that you guys trying to fix something or you were just trying it and it just coincided with the end of your marriage or how did that work? And again, well, feel free not to answer if you don't want to. No, absolutely. Open book here. Um, there's actually quite an interesting backstory to that. So my then wife knew that I was very, should we call it sexually expressive, right? Open, open-minded and, and, and engaged with my sexual energy a lot. And we'd had discussions about, you know, experiences had in the past and they've been toyed with bits and pieces and fantasy and a whole, whole bunch of other carry on, uh, gone on. And she sort of got quite into the idea of a threesome with another guy. And of course I was like, yeah, happy days. Like, let's get amongst it. Because for me, one of the biggest turn-ons is seeing what I term my favorite porn star getting fucked in front of me right like who (laughs) doesn't like that and at the time uh, my then wife was my favorite porn star you couldn't pay me enough money to go back there but at the time you know like happy happy days and so I was like absolutely let's let's get amongst that and so there's a couple of experiences uh, there and the reason I said it was towards the end of the marriage or other than the fact it was how it came about and it came about and I only learned this after the fact was she had actually been having an affair with her old boyfriend from before we got together. And I suspect, though I can't confirm this, but I suspect that that having a sexual encounter with someone else with my blessing somehow for her helped her deal with the guilt and shame of having a non-monogamous but not consented 
experience. And she kind of alluded to that in a couple of conversations uh, after we broke or during the during the breakup. So I, I suspect that that was part of it was that she had some sort of guilt and she was using that as a way of blanketing or making having sex with someone else okay because I'd consented it here. So maybe it was a little bit more okay over here. Now, I know that got real fucking deep real quick, but um, <laughs> you asked the fucking question, man. <laughs> Thank you. That's interesting though. The human yeah. psychology is. Yeah, honestly. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, people will try to justify anything that they feel like is wrongdoing but and i go back and i go back to what i said earlier earlier in this episode right which is about that intention it's about connecting with yourself and remember i said is your moral compass pointing north that's the sort of shit i'm talking about so it's not manipulating your partner into performing non-monogamous sex with you or for you or whatever it's like doing it together as a team for all the right reasons with the good communication in place clear consent clear boundaries and and the moral compass point in north so it's a fucking fascinating topic hey eh? mm. yeah i'm sorry you went through that man but thank you for sharing for sure do you know Definitely. what i do you know what i'm not because um my life is glorious now and it taught me a whole lot of stuff and i think sometimes you gotta you know you gotta you gotta walk through the desert to appreciate the fucking lemonade at the other end <laughs> amen brother so kitty what's your experience with non-monogamy i just want to tell you i love you first thank you so much thompson but i just yeah so much respect so much respect in this journey and thank you for your honesty and vulnerability because it's a big part of what we stand for as well like in all of our sharing whether we're being interviewed or in our podcast if you ask us a question we will answer it honestly as vulnerable as it is Mm -hmm. thank you uh so i had been like I said only in traditional monogamous relationships and I'd pretty much gone from long term to long term to long term pretty much from Johnson um so from the age of about 13 even at that age it was you know year and a half two years three year relationships uh and then I was with my ex-husband for seven and a half years and then I was single for uh, probably about nine months before I then met my ex I was with him for two and a half years that was all like close relationships very traditional and I've always been a real sexual being like I just (laughs) always have and it's become more and more and more so in my dilution of shame in so many areas of my own life like so many areas of my own personal growth has been diluting shame around my own mental health and my own struggles and all these things and a part of that was also diluting shame around my sexuality so with my last partner, we really explored, yeah, like the boundaries of kink and bondage and all these things. I was feeling the most sexually liberated in partnership I ever had. So to be honest, when we broke up, I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> because my conditioning told me I could only experience that kind of connection within a traditional monogamous relationship, right? I was literally like, oh, fuck, there goes the big side of this fucking sex in my life. <laughs> and it was great sex. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> um, it, was, it was great sex. And it was great sex. And then I made this decision to not look for or bring in any kind of traditional relationship. I wanted to be single. I wanted to explore what it was to be single pretty much for the first time properly, consciously in my life. And I'm 31. Um, and and also, I just didn't have the fucking time for a traditional relationship. I got three kids. You know, I got three kids, running a business, you know, passion projects like this and everything like that. And so I knew what I didn't want, but I didn't know what I did want. And that has been really fun. So over the last year, I have experienced... Um, a real openness and honesty in my own communication about what my desires are so I have a, had a couple of really awesome like friends with benefit situations where again totally honestly going into it like there's a friendship and a partnership and communication and like we would have like fucking great sex and then not know if we we're ever going to see each other again but there was real honesty and openness uh, and then I met someone where we did go into a like relationship dynamic and he had been in non-monogamous relationships for about five years. And that was what I was kind of calling in. I was like, look, I don't want that. I kind of did like friends with benefit situations going on. But I kind of like the idea of companionship as well, like in some way of just a bit more closeness and intimacy with someone as opposed to kind of just the friends as a basis. So we entered into that. 
and it was really great I loved it there were so many triggers for me like to be honest being fresh really into that being in a relationship setting and then opening it up so within that time before we'd kind of made that an official and an open relationship setting I, I did sleep with one other person and then we laid a foundation for okay this is actually going to be what the parameter is what the boundaries are within this this is how the communication is going to work we kind of laid that foundation and then we'd both been intimate with someone else one of which was the guy that I'd already had this kind of really great fuck buddy situation going on <laughs> um we were in that probably a couple maybe like two months and then he wanted to make it a close relationship uh, <laughs> and I was like oh fuck <laughs> that was a blow because I, I was like, oh, I, I thought I knew. I was like, I thought I knew what I wanted. Now I don't know what I want. And I'm like, no, I want this. And honestly, it was really confusing. It was a really, really confusing time. But I kind of was curious. So we did. We teamed it up. It became a closed person relationship. And it didn't work <laughs> <laughs> for a number of reasons. But it, came, it brought me back to my truth. But coming back to this truth was, to be completely honest, the moment he said to me, he said, I'm getting a monogamous energy um uh, my whole body was going no it said no that was what it was and I actually didn't listen I did want to know what else was possible for us in terms of our sexuality we were exploring a lot of tantra and stuff as well and there was this kind of what would happen if we did close this off uh so and, and a lot of really beautiful sexual things happened however yeah I didn't listen to my to my true north during that um and so I think everything works out exactly how it should so yeah, now I am very open in my sexuality. I I am very particular about who I would sleep with. And I would prefer to have kind of that friends with benefits, but in a really like respectful, honoring way. That's what I am kind of exploring now and where I'm at now. Yeah, well, I'm sorry that happened to you <laughs> with you guys. <laughs> That's okay. But like, honestly, I'm a believer in everything happening how it should. And it was a lesson for me. And actually, I didn't listen to myself. Yeah. I know. That's what always gets us is not listening to ourselves, mm-hmm. even though uh-huh. it's very clear what we should do. But mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's okay. Lots of lessons in it. I like your where you are right now and what you're wanting. I would say that's a type of non monogamy that's very different I've never heard that Mm -hmm. like just wanting a friends with benefits in this comfort Mm -hmm. way that's interesting it's It's so lovely like even this yeah even this um guy that I started sleeping with last year and I've I've known him but actually uh I'm gonna say this now because no one from my old work is listening so I used to be a teacher uh, like an (laughs) early childhood teacher I used to work with under five-year-olds and um he was a dad a single dad from my center and so for for, for at least four or five months we were fucking and nobody knew about it and he would come in to pick up his son <laughs> oh my god it was so funny like I would have stayed at his house like that weekend and then he'd come in <laughs> pick up his son he was like hi blah, blah, blah. and I'm like hey and all and then like literally as soon as he leaves we both text each other like oh my god I'm thinking about you naked <laughs> that was really funny <laughs> um but what were we we were very respectful open communication around it um and I would stay at his house. Like we had these things where we would cuddle on the couch, like watching TV for a couple of hours. It was really great. It helped me to take a break from, you know, how busy my life is. And, and it was beautiful. And then I'd stay over, we'd get ready for the day, you know, and then I'd go. But there was so much respect and openness in it. And I, I'd really like to normalize that. <laughs> yeah. Mm. One thing I wanted to just comment on that um, Kitty said there before, you said at one point you thought sex could only look like that in that way, right? Yeah. And then the conversation moved to like friends with benefits. So one thing that I was actually quite remiss and I, and I forgot when you asked me what my non-monogamous experience was, is that in the current dynamic that Mrs. Johnson and I have, there's also another kind of sub dynamic to that, right? So yes, I'm free to play with other people. Now we have very clear boundaries around how that works and doesn't work, right? But not everybody, as you said, like it's our sexuality is very unique and individual to us, right? There's a whole lot of different dials in the cockpit 
and for all of us they're all in diff- slightly different places so like me and kitty our like impact play dial might be set the same cool like we really enjoy impact play together but our anal sex one might be slightly different like she really loves it i'm not into it so you know and and that's true for for most most people now one of the things that i really enjoy is playing with a really sensual style of dominance and submission that doesn't gel with mrs johnson's sexuality so much and so i actually have a submissive someone who's submissive to me who i'm not in a committed relationship with there's no amorous feelings but we have a really delicious pull and push of that whole dominant submissive energy. And we get to play with that in this container over here within these boundaries that sits alongside my relationship with Mrs. Johnson. So non-monogamy can be quite a useful tool if it's done in the right way to allow a partner who's in a committed relationship who absolutely loves and adores their primary partner, but maybe has one of those dials set slightly different and wants to play with it non-monogamy done right can provide a safe little container for that to happen as well as long as the other primary partner is coming from a place of compersion right which is the opposite of jealousy compersion is like feeling the joy in someone else's joy if they're on board that in and of itself can bring in a whole lot of that deliciousness back into your sexual energy that doesn't quite fit within your primary relationship so you know that's like one of the benefits of non-monogamy that people can chew on i love that yeah absolutely so johnson do you have any interesting stories of swinging or anything do you want good stories hot stories funny stories bad stories well what's, uh, what's, your, what, what's your category sounds like you're looking for something in specific funny or bad <laughs> yeah i want funny or bad too <laughs> too bad. <laughs> okay well this was man i must have been like i was young it was fairly early myself and my partner who i was with at the time were in a hotel and there was a single guy coming to join us for some fun so happy days that was all that was all groovy it was all negotiated and that was fine i d- didn't do an amazing job of vetting this person like they seemed nice enough i'm now a bit more careful anyway person shows up there's like alcohol a fair bit of alcohol involved again well i don't drink now but again something that i learned the hard way right is to is to moderate the alcohol intake and the quick and the dirty of the story was that as my partner was was naked and there was things going on this gentleman or not as the case might be grabbed her underwear and put it in the back pocket of his jeans and we were like mm, what uh, the fuck's going on here like i mean i, I get it like some people are into mm-hmm. like sniffing panties and mm-hmm. stuff and again i'm not here to yuck anybody's yum mm. right that was not part of the agreement though but you ask right you ask before anything mm-hmm. yeah. And, yeah and there was no there was no asking going on and there was almost this look on his face like is anyone going to pull me up on this or like you know like i'm powerful because <laughs> i've just taken your missus panties and so it's like uh, bro what the fuck and he's, um, I can't remember what exactly came out of his mouth because I kind of saw red afterwards to be fair, but mm-hmm. there was something along the lines of like, I fucked you now. So I like, these are mine or there, there was some kind of like mention, uh, of, there was some uh, kind of me- mention of ownership. So w- the room we were in, in the hotel was up a couple of floors and everyone was still naked. So I just opened the window and I chucked all his clothes out and made him walk through the hotel down to the car park. <laughs> naked to get his clothes. Oh my. Yes! Like a boss! <laughs> That's oh, all oh, fuck that good. Yeah, because fuck that guy. Yeah, fuck him. Well, I'm not yeah. going to fuck him, actually. No. No, no we're not going to. You got the panties, but you got his dignity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah did you get the, the did you get her underwear back no oh no oh. he probably what still has those that fucking probably floor. still has them and that yeah. wasn't really our concern right like no it was the disrespect yeah 100 yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, not me not going wrong yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and then the other end of that spectrum is sex parties that have gone on for 48 hours where yeah. afterwards i've got home and i've 
looked down at my dick and gone, I should go and see a doctor because it's like it's literally swollen and puffy <laughs> from having such a great time. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. So, oh, it was amazing. It was totally worth it. Like I yeah. it, like there's one night in particular I, I recall fucking a lot of really, really hot women. And and having a puffy penis was absolutely worth it. <laughs> <laughs> that should be another um, slogan for one of our t-shirts that we're going to make having a puffy penis was worth it hashtag puffy penis if your penis ain't puffy you're doing it wrong well not to darken the laughter but you mentioned earlier that mental health was something important to y'all. Can you tell us why it's important to you and your experiences with it? Oh, yeah. Um, so this is actually how we got here, to be honest. I'll share this story and then I'll kind of share a bit more about my own experience. So about, oh, it must have been about a year ago now, I did an Instagram Live. and. I have been working with holistic well-being and advocating for women's mental health and a lot of this stuff for quite a long time. And I had this really big calling to reach out to how I could support men's mental well-being because I just had this really vivid image in my mind of there is only so much we're going to be able to do to help our society if we only look after our women. We also need to witness how society has failed our men and so in New Zealand, we have the worst suicide rates for men in the OECD. And we have the worst youth suicide rates in the OECD as well. It's a, our suicide and mental health is a fucking issue in this country. And it continues to be. And there isn't really much that's being done about it. I'm just going to say that. Like it seems to be a lot of, I've worked in these industries, seems to be a lot of external facilities and organizations, non-for-profits that are doing the work here. And still... Uh, everyone knows someone it's really it's horrific and so I did this Instagram live and I said look I'm here as a woman I know what I can do for women's well-being I've got my own experiences I called out to men in my life I said look can you come to me tell me how I can support you tell me what it would look like I would love to co-facilitate spaces I don't know like I'm here asking for help and Johnson actually initially kind of reached out to me but then didn't for a while after that And then came to me and said, look, we need to talk. (laughs) I've been thinking about a couple of things. And since you did that Instagram live, something has like shifted in me. And I think that there's something we can do together in terms of well-being and mental health and so many of these things. So anyway, long story short, short, through lots of conversations and ideas and stuff thrown around, we came up with the idea for this this podcast that we do. Because it's a, a lot of what we saw, especially with our men, was this conditioning around sexuality and not being able to be sexually free and aggression and anger and um, unprocessed emotions that were coming into these spaces and intimacy, especially here in New Zealand, where we have this whole um, tough guy thing that's real fucking bullshit and it's killing our guys of like to be strong is to not show your emotions, to be strong is to not be intimate, not be vulnerable, like not show that soft side. And it's really, really toxic here it's wounded and it's generational and and I mean we can see it all over the world but we're really in it so we wanted to bring something in that that was also a safe space a safe space co-hosted by a man and a woman that anyone could feel comfortable to come into we were going to turn up vulnerable advocating for these things talking about shame talking about mental health talking about sexuality so that's actually how this whole thing happened my own experiences um I was (laughs) If you you listen to episode one of Sex with My Ex, you'll hear when Johnson and I first met, uh, I was living through a lot of suppressed trauma, a lot of suppressed trauma through being in an abusive family home, having a mentally unwell mother, um, lots of stuff with drug addiction and stuff like that. It kind of came to the point where I was self-harming. I'd never been diagnosed. It took until after my second baby when I finally got a postnatal depression diagnosis, which then turned into prenatal depression diagnosis and actually probably a decade of depression and post-traumatic stress disorder from living in an abusive home and a whole lot of things 
and then what I believe turned into high functioning anxiety disorder as well. <laughs> so like a lot of the things, um, my mother's diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. I don't have her in my life anymore, but I, I've been in it. I've been in it. I've been in the struggle of it. And this is why I'm such a big advocate for sexual freedom, because truly me stepping into utilizing pleasure as a healing modality in my own life to move through a lot of my own emotions and the vulnerability in this space when it comes to mental well-being has been profound. And now it's my job. You know, I'm now a holistic wellness practitioner and I'm holding people in a lot of trauma. And we need us, like we need people in these spaces that are going into all the uncomfortable conversations because it has to be the village. We could, you know, sit here as much as we like. Like I could be sitting here going, New Zealand government has failed us and, and all these people have failed us. Yes, and like, what are we going to do about it? So I think that's brought us to where we are now. And, you know, people think they're coming into a sex positive podcast, which they are. And we're going to be continuously talking about these other things too. That's how ours is too. It's mainly about swinging, but there's other things that are at play with people's lives. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And, and you can't judge a book by its cover. I'll keep, I'll keep it real short. My, my perspective or experience on the mental health thing with the preface that I'm not a trained therapist. So people need to understand that when I, when I speak about this stuff uh, and, and I would love to stand in a place and I am standing in a place where I'm standing alongside people just as, yeah. as a broken or a once broken brother to my broken brothers, right? That's the place I'm coming from. I, I'll give you a snapshot. I'd come from a military flying background and the selection process to be a military pilot's pretty fucking difficult, right? And by, I'm not blowing smoke up my own ass here. This is just the snapshot of my life. Did very well at school, very well at sports, represented my country for different bits and pieces, had uh, different bands because I'm a musician that did quite well. We went on a fucking tour around New Zealand. Like I had all the shit going on. That was really fucking cool, like really cool. Fast forward to when I was 27 and I was the CEO of a domestic airline and I was getting championed by a lot of people, you know, like I'd done really pretty well in my life. What people didn't know was that behind the scenes, I was an alcoholic. I didn't know it at the time. They call it high functioning alcoholism, which let me tell you is fucking bullshit. High functioning is what happens when you stop drinking. If you're an alcoholic, mm. like I wasn't high performing fucking anything. I was like very mediocre fucking performing. That's not to say that alcohol is bad for everybody. I would love to be a normal drinker. They call them like, I'd love to be able to just have two beers, like have a great night. And then that's it. I can't, I keep drinking till all the piss is drunk or everyone's in bed. One is too many and a thousand's not enough for me. I've realized that. So it's just easier to stay clear of it, right? It's not true for everybody. So I was an alcoholic. I had suppressed anxiety which i didn't even know existed i just thought it was stress from running an airline and doing all this other cool shit that was going on in my world right now how's this for fucking vulnerable i got arrested for assaulting my wife now there is a couple of things that thankfully it was a physical action like i'm not going to mince this like it was assault by the definition of the law Absolutely. And I fucking own that. And there's no condoning anything. But thankfully, I was arrested then and she didn't do what most women do and not report it. Like, I'm grateful that she called the cops and I got arrested because it could have escalated. It was a minor incident as far as assaults go, but it was still a fucking assault. That for me was a trigger moment where I looked in the mirror and I went, see of a fucking airline or not, like, what you've done in sport and what you've done in music and what you've done in this and that like who the fuck are you man what the fuck's going on here like where's this come from and there was all this pen that manifest in this outburst of anger right towards this person i supposedly loved that was the moment where i took stock and i looked in the mirror and i was like that job title and it's just fucking noise like it's all just a costume and it was the first time i really examined what was going on inside me and fuck man like it was broken it was really broken so that was early 2019 i am at a place now where the drinking's sorted the aggression sorted i've self-referred and did a whole bunch of programs on male aggression assault all, all sorts of different stuff doing a whole lot of work on my spirituality my sexuality and what, what i would say and 
because people might go like, how does mental health and sexuality and swinging and like, why the fuck do these tie together? You are a whole human and all the parts are intertwined. Your spirituality, your sexuality, your mental health, your physical health, your nutrition, your exercise, your personal relationships, your family, all of it makes you, right? And so if any part of that is damaged or is not being tended to, it'll fucking poison the rest of it, right? So fast forward, I'm now in a place where I'm like wanting to stand beside these men and I can't fix it for them, but I can certainly pass on my experience and just let them know that it doesn't matter what your job title is. It doesn't matter what's going on in your world. Like you can still have real shit that you need to process and it doesn't make you any less human or any less man. In fact, you're a fucking man in my case for stepping up and wanting to deal with it. This is a great saying, and I'll just let, I'll leave you with this thought. There's this brilliant saying that I love at the moment, which is pain and destruction runs through a family until someone is prepared to stand up and feel it. Wow. I'm into that, my friend. That's deep. <laughs> <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your story because I know that you're not the only one out there who's experienced that. There are other mm-hmm. men mm-hmm. that are suffering and maybe hearing your story might they help. Look some of the shame. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And if any of them are listening, I just want to tell you, like, I hear you and I see you, bro, and I mm-hmm. and much, much, much love. And to go back to, I guess, the topic of the podcast, right? There is deliciousness on the other side of it, you know, and there yeah. are people out there that will, that will walk through it with you. You know, you guys are just doing you guys are blessing people with your podcast as well don't downplay that it's really awesome mm. you know like we've listened to the conversations you guys have had about some of this stuff mm. and anxiety and that and it's it's powerful you guys are awesome and we love you guys for it too yeah oh, thank well, you <laughs> well before we let you guys go can you give us your best sex advice mine would be to um, encourage people to connect to their own pleasure so to explore self-pleasure, um, we've got a really good episode on it, um, but to own it and reclaim it because for so many of us, that's been taken away. And then if you're in partnership, you can then openly communicate that. But just to take, reclaim your own pleasure, whatever that might look like. Yeah. Johnson? I love that. I was going to say exactly what Kitty said. So, <laughs> <laughs> what, I, Kitty. so what I... So what, what, I, what I will say is, is number two is get outside of your body. So if you're a guy, for example, get outside of like what your cock is feeling right now and take that energy that's there and try what, however you want to do this in your own mind. doesn't matter like whether you want to visualize it or feel it or just fake it till you make it. Take that energy and somehow try and transfer it into the person that you're having a sexual connection with. If you want to do that through energy, sweet. If you want to do that with your hands, sweet. If you want to do it by kissing, sweet. Just make that intention that I'm going to pass on this sexual energy I'm feeling to this other person mm-hmm. I'm having a connection with and just watch what happens. It's, mm-hmm. it's delicious. Mm. Mm. Are you going to do that? You have to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go in with a with curiosity into the exploration of it. Yeah. Yes, and I better be mm. satisfied. <laughs> hey, you're supposed to be reclaiming your own pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, amazing. So thank you guys for coming on. We really oh. appreciate it. And can you tell everybody where to find y'all? Absolutely. Thank you so very much for having us. Sex with my ex podcast.com is the website. You'll find most of the stuff through there. Otherwise, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all the podcast players. If you just type in sex with my ex podcast, we'll come up eventually. Look for the little green logo. Um, mm. But yeah, the, the website's got everything on it. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, guys. We, we love, love you. Thank you so much, guys. We appreciate it a lot. It's been awesome. those guys don't you i do they're fucking awesome they have such beautiful souls i just love them yeah and beautiful voices and faces and faces honestly yeah they actually are just beautiful people in general we're obsessed (laughs) marry us (laughs) 
Okay. So, for a fresh update, we haven't done anything yet. We had one date that was canceled. So, we've still been lame since the party. But, we're talking to three new couples. And we do have a date planned this week. So... Hopefully next episode, we'll finally have an update for you guys. A new story to tell. I'm sure we will. We better. They're going to get bored of us. I know, right? We're so boring. <laughs> we're literally a swingers podcast that doesn't fucking swing. You're like, we're starting the swinging lifestyle. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, we do have two fresh forms this week. Zach, you can read Mike's. To clarify, this is not Mike from Mike and Becca, right? This is a different Mike. A different Mike. All right. So Mike did the starting the lifestyle forum and asked, what was your biggest worry or hesitation that it would fuck up our relationship and we wouldn't be able to get back to where we were before entering the lifestyle should it not do so well? I think that's very understandable, very at, like normal. Normal hesitation. Yeah, because it's like once you go, it's like you can't undo what's already done so i get that how did you learn about the lifestyle tiktok wow watching content creators from overseas oh yeah you don't know this but there's like a swinger community on tiktok wow i didn't know that yeah that's kind of cool we don't have tiktoks yeah we're we're lame i refuse i know because here's the thing if we were to get tiktoks we would just get so fucking involved in it that's why i don't because everybody else is like oh it's so addicting it's so much and it's like exactly like i don't want like another thing to take up more of my fucking time you know yeah i don't want to take like videos of myself i wouldn't make any i would just fucking sit there scrolling through them all day type in the search bar porn (laughs) (laughs) boobs (laughs) anyways so mature i know it asks, did you create rules slash boundaries or dive right in? We absolutely created boundaries. Initially, we wanted soft swap only. That changed after our first experience. We are still very set on the same room play, safe sex, etc. Was your first experience good or bad? Tell your story. It was perhaps a little rushed. We were so horny and keen to get on and do something that they possibly weren't the best couple for us as a first time. It was still really enjoyable, though. I wonder what he means by possibly weren't the best couple for us as a first time. Yeah. Interesting. Anything else you would like us to know slash say? We're early 30s, married from New Zealand. Hey, another New Zealand, another (laughs) Kiwi-er. Only fresh, in quotations, too. So really love hearing your stories and finding out that it's not easy for everyone. Aww. Aww. Yeah, it's definitely not easy for everyone. We're glad our struggles are relatable to you. Yeah, for sure. Now, I'm going to read Veronica and JP's form, which is the starting the lifestyle one as well. What was your biggest worry or hesitation? Jealousy and religion, but we came to realize monogamy in our eyes is being truthful and honest with your other half. Hmm. I agree completely. How did you learn about the lifestyle? Podcasts also. Did you create rules slash boundaries or dive right in? Rules and boundaries, personally, it's more about the girls playing and having fun. With the right couples we trust, we have been soft swap with and enjoyed. Was your first experience good or bad? In between, lol. Started off at a bar and grill and the girls had some fun in the bathroom to start off. We ended up back at our house, and the girls had a bunch of playtime, which was our main objective, while the guys watched and played pool. When it came time for the guys to join in, he wasn't able to perform. That's okay with us. It just made things a little awkward. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I get that. I know. That's like a worry of mine. We've already said on a previous episode, but... Yeah, it sucks because it's like... You can't control it, and, like, no one blames you, but it's also, like, eh. Yeah. It ruins the mood. It's like you can't just, like, pop a boner whenever you want, you know what I mean? We're not fucking 15 years old anymore. Anything else you would like us to know slash say? We really enjoy your podcast, and as younger Midwesterners, we like the down-to-earth attitude you guys have. Now fuck off. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, we're actually Midwesterners too at this point. So. Yeah, currently where we live. Yeah. Midwesterners, but thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for telling us to fuck off. We love hearing that, honestly. It's like become just such a thing with us now. I know. So that's all we have for this week. And the last thing, just as a reminder, you can support our show in multiple ways. You can donate, of course, and there's a donation page on the website. Or you can subscribe to our OnlyFans. And also, I don't remember if I posted this anywhere yet, but another way to support us is you're able to have a video call with us. It's just like a dollar per minute. It's not much, but it just helps out a little. And you can chat with us. Or you can watch us dry hump each other. You can have us watch y'all have sex for all you exhibitionists out there. Who knows if you're lucky? A nut might slip out. One of Sarah's lips might slip out. Ew, no. You never know. Don't say lips. Maybe I'll put my nut in her vagina. What is wrong with you? (laughs) I'm cutting all of that out. (laughs) Why? It's funny. You're weird. But yeah, I'm not sure if I have that whole thing set up yet for it. But by the time I post this, I will. So there'll be a link in the episode notes or the show notes, description, whatever you want to call it. There'll be a link to sign up for that and pick a time and day to talk to us or do whatever else. Anything your fucking heart desires. I will literally eat a shoe for you guys. That's not what they want to see. I don't know, man. There's some weird people out there. Anyways. (laughs) Now, the last way that you guys can support us is through one of our affiliates. And we have a new one. It is a swinger and lifestyle community website. It's called Pineapple. But it's spelled P-I-N-A-P-P-L. So like without the E's. And it's a brand new site. And it's pretty cool. I mean, I know we're all using these old sites that are kind of crappy. So it's nice having a nice newer site. And on there you can post pictures and videos. You can listen to podcasts on there. You can find out about events. You can read articles, you can make blog posts, so it's really cool, and it is new. It's only been out for, I think, two months, but so it is growing, and I think it has a lot of potential, so I definitely think y'all should check that out. We'll put our link in the episode notes, and then our other affiliate is Casual Toys, which is an online sex shop. You know, get yourself some new vibrators, some new butt plugs, some lingerie, some men's lingerie. Bingo. I wanted to buy some for Zach, but he won't let me. (laughs) But, oh, actually, I was going to mention this earlier in the beginning. So, y'all, I've never had a magic wand before, and I finally got one. But I bought their mini version. It's not tiny or anything it's just a little bit smaller and it's cordless and rechargeable and it's fucking awesome i love it so if you think that the normal size magic wand is too big or too heavy or whatever else and you don't like the cord with it too i definitely recommend getting the mini version because it's really awesome that link will be in the show notes too Yeah, and if you guys can think of any way that we can give you something in return for you supporting us, please let us know. Reach out to us and just give us your ideas because we are very open to do whatever. Yeah, because we don't want to ask for y'all to just donate. Like, we want y'all to have something in return. Right. Yeah. So. How can they reach out to us, Sarah? You can email us at thefreshpineapples at gmail.com or you can go to our website at fresh-pineapples.com 
You can follow us on Twitter at Fresh Pineapples with a Z, not an ES. Oh, we keep forgetting to bring up what our next episode is. Sorry about that. But our next episode is going to be about stuff to do with communication. So not a typical swinger communication episode, like how to communicate to your partner about this and that and everything. This is more about problems with communication. Like we're going to go over switch tracking, meta emotion mismatch, and problems and solutions and just all kinds of stuff that help with your relationship and swinging and basically just any communication in general. I think that'll be interesting to learn about. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, I hope y'all have a good week and that's all. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thanks for listening to Fresh Pineapples. Now, fuck off.